Hi, good morning. My project proposal title is The Barrier, and this is the Devil's Cave Dam in Pasadena, California. This is the back side of the dam. Uh, there's some loaders and excavators here. But I'll go more into the dam. Ready? Hi, good morning. My project proposal title is The Barrier, and this is the Devil's Cave Dam in Pasadena, California. This is the back side of the dam. Uh, there's some loaders and excavators here. But I'll go more into the dam later on in this presentation. I first want to give a brief background to dam infrastructure in California and the problems that are associated with these dams. In an episode of last week, tonight, with John Oliver, he mentioned that dams are the most important device we have, or amazing device that we have, holding back liquid, other than the idea of having to use a porta potty. You know, he, goes, he goes into more detail to say that the age of our dams is over 52 years, and lots of them have problems um, with them. In California alone, there are over 800 dams categorized in the high hazard category by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. Most of our dams are used for irrigation and water supply. Uh, entering our fourth year of drought in California, it's extremely important to balance this need for water with this, um, uh, all of the dams maintenance problems, including sedimentation, which reduces our reservoir capacity. This is the San Clemente Dam on the Carmel River. This is over two and a half million cubic yards of sediment trapped behind the reservoir. The, the dam posed a safety hazard to communities on the Carmel River, so now they're in the process of completely removing the dam. I think this year they're slated to complete the, the removal. Um, but this is the dam during a flood. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of sediment and debris just washing over the dam. Um, and to date, this will be the largest dam removal in California history. But this isn't the only dam which is having a sedimentation issue. In addition to the San Clemente Dam, there is the the Ringe Dam on Malibu Creek, which will be this one. It is now completely topped out with sediment. It functions now as a 100 foot tall retaining wall, pretty much. And uh, it's owned by California State Parks. There's a lot of debate as to if they want to remove the dam or keep it in place. Landowners below it are afraid of flooding if it's taken out, but there's also the consideration of restoring habitat. This is a Mauleha Dam in Ventura County. Um, it was built with 7,000 acre feet of capacity for water. It currently has less than 500 acre feet capacity. It's expected to fill up completely by the year 2020. There is a plan to remove it, um, but currently there is a lack of funding and some disagreement with stakeholders, so it's still there in place. This is the Searsville Dam owned by Stanford University. It has less than 10% capacity behind it, and they're currently conducting comprehensive reviews to see if they want to let it fill up and turn into a wetland, or if they want to dredge the sediment that's behind there um, to increase the safety of the dam. It is classified as a high hazard dam at the moment. And the, the bigger problem is dams that are on rivers prevent the natural sedimentation process from happening, which means that the natural sediment and, and sand doesn't reach our coastal beaches, which in the, in the end can lead to shrinking beaches and less coastal resiliency when you have floods and eventual sea level rise. Another problem is the loss of habitat for fish species like the pink salmon, steelhead, and rainbow trout. They depend on upstream habitat to spawn and reproduce, and with dams in the way, they have a hard time doing that. And additionally, fish that are caught in the backs of their dams in reservoirs can experience um, fish kill from eutrophication as reservoirs are very stagnant and become hot. One solution now is to remove dams entirely. This is the Condit Dam in Washington. They bore a hole in the bottom of the dam, stuffed it with 700 pounds of explosives, and released all the sediment that was underneath it before removing the dam entirely. So more and more, this is becoming one of the solutions to sedimentations in coastal dams. This is the dam I'll be focusing on in my project. It's the Devil's Gate Dam in Pasadena, California. It sits one and a half miles of the south of the San Gabriel Mountains. Um, behind it is the Hahamunga Watershed Park. It's now completely full of sediment, which LA County is planning to remove um, in a five-year process. This is the sediment picture here. The process will involve over 400 truck trips a day for five years. Um, so it's a huge impact on the surrounding communities, and there's a lot of backlash currently um, against the project. Um, but before I go into that, I'll give a little bit more context to the site. Uh, it's again, it's located in Pasadena, California. The red dot is where the dam is at. Below the dam, it's over 95% urbanized. Um, above it is the Angeles National Forest, which is for the most part undeveloped. Um, the Arroyo Seco, sorry, the dam and pounds the Arroyo Seco River, which is a major tributary of the Los Angeles River. It's all a concrete channel currently. And um, the 2009 station fire um, 
pictured here in red, burned pretty much the entire undeveloped watershed uh, north of the dam, which then led to a massive amount of erosion when storms hit the site and contributed to most of the debris which sits behind the dam now. And in the next graphic, you'll see current levels of sediment behind the dam. So since the dam was built in 1920, there's this recurring cycle of fire, storm, erosion, and then deposition behind the dam, which creates this constant need for removal. And in the park now, with all the sediment there, there's new habitat that's built up, and LA County wants to remove all of that. And so um, if they don't, you have this humongous flood risk along all of these communities, South Pasadena, Pasadena, Los Angeles. If there was a flood, you have this overtopping potential in all these, these areas that are pictured here in red. Um, and so given that, there are environmental groups that are against this plan of removal, like the Seco Foundation and the Pasadena Audubon Society. They state that the LA County is not being sensitive to the habitat that's there now, and they're gonna disrupt communities and create all this pollution uh, in the process of removal. Um, so they're actually filing suit against the county now. They raise money to do that. And um, they actually propose their own alternative plan, which is pictured in the upper right. Their footprint is in light blue. So as you can see, it's much less than the LA County's footprint to remove sediment, pictured here in dark blue. So they want to be more sensitive to the habitat that's there now. So with my proposal, I want to create a, uh, a design intervention or come up with planning and design solutions that fit into the cycle of fire, storm, erosion, deposition, and then uh, sedimentation and removal. So I think this process as a whole is pretty unsustainable and not um, economically sound if you're having to do it every so often when there's fires um, and major storms. And I want to con contribute to a, a better definition of sustainable sediment management as a whole. Thank you.